gonna show you how to dry pan. We came up with this new technique, and I don't think anybody else has got it because I've never seen it anywhere. And I'm gonna show you how to do it, and it's really simple. And all you need is, is two, maybe three items, and that would be a Garrett Super Sluice Gold Pan, and of course, five gallon bucket. Well, I should have classified, and that was the third item you could have brought out here, but I didn't. And I'm gonna show you that you can do it even without classifying. First thing you do is stratify. Stratifying means that you're gonna get all your heavies to the bottom and all your big rocks to the top. All your heavies being your hematite and your magnetite and your garnet, stuff like that. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna shake it vigorously, just like you would be classifying. Just like that. Now, as you're shaking it, I want you to tilt the pan forward. Don't worry, this is all waste rock. It ain't no good, unless of course it's got quartz and gold string or specimens. You're gonna tilt it forward, just like this. And what I'm doing is I'm rocking everything to the front crease of the pan, just like that. Now, here's the difference. You're gonna put the pan in the bucket at a 45 degree angle, and what you're gonna do is you're just gonna rock it back and forth. All right, so what you wanna do is you wanna get the edge of the pan here, right here on the edge of the bucket, and you're rocking it back and forth like this. And as you tilt the pan down further, you're gonna bring the pan back here. So you're gonna start off here, back and forth. And just this part right here is touching the, the side of the uh, five gallon bucket. And I'm gonna bring it back, bring it back, bring it back. So the edge is still there. Not this, not this, not this, but the edge right here. Just like this. See that? And it creates the vibration necessary to hold that gold, almost like you're trying to start a fire. And if you wanted to, you could probably even notch your pan or your five gallon bucket to create more vibration. You just got a nice easy rocking going back and forth. See that? Don't get all crazy with it. Don't try to make it shoot out across the top of the bucket. You just gently increase the tilt of the pan so you can watch it walking over the edge. I'm gonna get that almost at a 90 degree angle. I got one rock in there. Ah, get that out of the way. I got one rock. I'm gonna check that out real quick. I don't see nothing in that. I'll put them in there anyway. All right, now what you're gonna do is you're gonna walk the sand away from the heavies. And how do you do that? I'll see if I can get in the sun here for you. Is you're going to focus your attention here, not down here, don't worry. You're gonna focus here and you're gonna tap the back of the pan, make the sand walk up. You need to watch here so you can gauge on how much of an angle you need on that pan. See that? And see that sand walking up to the top? And if I have too much of an angle, the whole thing will walk forward. If it's too steep, nothing will come up. See how I'm gauging the angle? And I'm watching right here. All right, that should be good enough. I'm gonna blow in the pan and it'll blow everything away except for the gold, if there's any in there. Right there. One little tiny flake. I don't know if you can see it. I'll get my finger up in there. That's not too shabby. I got a bunch of heavies in there and I'll probably pan those up later. I want to show you how to pan for gold the proper way. I see a lot of people out there doing it. it drives me crazy because they take so long. And if you're out in the field sampling, you better go through that pan in a couple minutes or less because if not, you're wasting your time. And of course, you know me, I love the Garrett Super Sluice. Now, when you buy a Garrett Super Sluice, it's usually going to come with one of these. It's classifiers. This would be considered a number two because there's two openings per linear in. I strongly recommend one of these. It's called a snuffer bottle. It's not a sniffer bottle, it's a snuffer bottle. And you're gonna want a 45 angle cut that on the top and you wanna make sure that it's got a good trap in the bottom too. A lot of people don't talk about this, but this little guy right here, it's called a jeweler's loop. This is a 10 times, you can go up to a 20, a 30, a 40, but 10 times strong or stronger, jeweler's loop. You're gonna need this to inspect to see if you got gold in your pan. If you don't have any gold, you can use these copper BBs. They're really great to practice with because if you can get down to this and you can get down to gold and then of course i tell people to get these lead pellets and you can hammer them flat and that way they resemble a gold nugget we're gonna go over the basics so you can understand it okay because a lot of people don't go into this and i'm gonna go into it thorough so you can understand the dynamics involved we're gonna fill this thing up just like such now remember i got my classifier in there first see that classifier sits on top of the gold pan just like that and i'm gonna put all my what i think is pay dirt from a river i'm not gonna put a lot in there just a little bit First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna classify. Now I highly recommend that you classify your material wet. In case there's any gold on it, it gets washed off because gold will get trapped in clay that gets stuck to the rocks. All right, now come here. I'm gonna show you the principles of panning. We have all our material in the pan. You see that? It's been classified down. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this to represent a gold nugget. Now see, when it's dry, it just sits there. It don't do nothing. But if I shake that pan, watch what happens. 
It disappeared. Where did it go? It went right to the bottom. I've liquefied the material which made the heavier stuff, which is the gold, drop to the bottom. And any other things like black sands, hematite, and magnetite. Now gold has a specific gravity of 19.3, which means it's 19.3 times heavier than water and about three to five times heavier than black sand. When you agitate the material, you create liquefaction and you stratify all the material so all the heavier stuff goes to the bottom of the pan and all the lighter stuff comes to the top. And that's why you see the guys out there gold pan. First thing they do, what do they do? They shake that pan back and forth or they'll swirl it like this. What they're doing is they're getting that heavier gold to drop to the bottom. This material has got to be in water or underwater in order for the heavier stuff to go to the bottom. If you keep the water out and it's dry, it's hard and it's compact. See, there's my piece of gold right there. See it right there? Well, I'm going to go counterclockwise and that ensures that any gold goes right to the bottom. Making sure I keep water on there. I'm going to tilt the pan forward like such, but I got to keep water in it. So I'm going to tilt it forward. Then I'm going to shake back and forth and I'm going to like an ocean wave back and forth, back and forth. I'm going to bring that material because if there's any gold in there, it's going to be right up here on this little riffle right here. So I got to bring it back into the pan, swirl around again, shake back and forth. As I'm shaking back and forth like this, I'm going to start tilting the pan forward. And what that does is that ensures that that gold is down here in the bottom of this crease. And then I'm going to gently wash that lighter material off the top like that. Okay. Round and round, back and forth, start to tilt forward. Wash about three or four times. You can see that gold coming up. Now what I'm doing is when I'm circulating that, I'm bringing that material back away from the edge of these riffles right here. I want it away from there, circulating to the bottom. Round and round, back and forth, start to tilt forward. Then gently wash that lighter material right off the top. See how that big chunk of gold stays there? And as you get better, you use one hand, round and round, shake back and forth, gently wash. See, no matter what I do, that piece of gold ain't coming out of there. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna have all your heavies right up here in this crease right here, right there in that crease. I'll take him out of there so you can understand what's happening. So when you get down, you're gonna give it about three taps. One, two, three. And what that does is that makes sure that all that gold goes down in that crease right there is you're gonna gently take that water and swirl and swirl and swirl and tell you if you have any gold, it's gonna be right there. Now, as you get better at doing this, what I like to do is when I got down to this material here, this little tiny bit, what I'll do, you gotta have water in the pan, tap, tap, tap. And then what I'll do is I'll, as I'm bringing this down, I'll shake it like this. And you'll see me do that a lot. And that way I can get all that black sand material to flush away. And if I got any gold, it'll be up there in the top corner. Now, another trick that some guys will do is they'll do what's called the Alabama bump. And what that means is if you got gold or heavies in here, if you tap the top of that pan, all the heavies walk to the top too. Okay, now when you're out sampling, especially hard rock areas where the gold is really fine, you're gonna need this. You're sampling now, okay? This isn't production. You're gonna get in there with this and you're gonna inspect to see if there's little fine pieces of gold. If there are, then you know you're on a winner. But that's why you always see guys looking in the pan. It's not that they can't see the gold, but they're sampling to see if they're on the gold first. Because sometimes you get the back end of a, of a lead and that usually means that the gold can be really super fine. Or if you're working with hard rock gold. Again, in the water, classify, here we go, circular, back and forth, tilt, wash, about three or four times, bring the material back in the pan, circulate, back and forth, tilt, wash, nice and easy, just like that. As you get better, you can go faster. All right, back and forth, tilt, nice and easy. Round and round, tilt, back and forth, gently wash it out. Okay, I got about a little bit in there. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I'm gonna gently wash that material off. I wanna see if you can see this. Okay, then I'm gonna shake like I like to do, and then I'm gonna Alabama bump get my glove off so you can see this. All right, I don't know if you can see this, but I got one flake there. I got one flake there. I got a little flake there. I got some little tiny pieces right there. See them? And I'm sure I got some over here too, over in this washout right here. I see a lot of guys, they'll use the back of this pan right here. Ooh, I hate that because they take forever. All right, so what do you do? Fill your snuffer bottle up. You let your snuffer bottle clean the black sand off away from your gold. And that way you're not wasting two, three hours just trying to get a few micron pieces of gold. So what I'm gonna do is, see that? I'm washing away all that lighter material. Of course, I can move that out of the way with my snuffer bottle. 
And what I've done is see, I'm effectively washing all that black sand off. And then when I've squeezed all the water out, I'll bring some water gently to the front, release the vacuum on my snuffer bottle, gently go back and forth. Don't press down on it hard, just lightly over the top. And voila, all the gold is gone. Now I can still see some small pieces, one here, one here, and one here. So what I can do is I can use my snuffer bottle to blow them up to the top. Isn't that cool? And then I can just suck up again. That way you're not wasting all day for a few specks on the back side of your pan. Ooh, I hate that. I'm gonna show you how to do a 30 second pan. I know a lot of people don't think it can be done, but it can. I'm not gonna classify either. I'm just gonna dump it in. See that? All right, what's the key to the 30 second pan? Instead of using the water to move the lighter stuff out of the top, you're gonna use the side of your hand. Okay, but the trick is you gotta saturate all that material. So you're gonna get your hands in there like you're kneading bread. And you're making sure that water's around everything. All right, here we go. Use the back of your hand to push that lighter material out. Side of your hand. All that stuff that's stratified to the top. Push, push, push. All right, I'm getting down to the bottom here. I gotta be real careful. I don't know if I'm getting up on 30 seconds or not. Okay, it's about as far down as I'll tap, 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 shake. Alabama bump. And right there, there's my goal. Couple pieces there, one, two, there. You gotta be careful though. You don't wanna get here and push out from inside the pan. You wanna raise your hand up just a little bit. Cause if you got gold in the back, you'll actually wipe it right out. Push and you're gonna leave a cavity here. You're not gonna scoop. You're gonna push from about the center of your pan out to the edge, straight across like that. Take care everybody. Don't ever do nothing like this again.